Hey guys, so in today's video, we are going to look at my 1 million hand sample at 200 and L zone. Uh, I've been putting this off for quite a while, but here it is. So for those of you who don't know, I recently just completed 1 million hands at 200 and L zone. 200 and L zone is the fast fold variant on ignition. And I've been playing this stake for approximately two years now. So it will be quite interesting to see how my strategy has changed and how I have performed across the last two years. In the video, we will do a quick overview of my results. Then we will look at some of the pivot points within the sample. We'll also look at my positional win rates and some overall thoughts towards the end. So here is the final graph for a million hands. I went slightly over for this video, basically over a million, three thousand, a million and 3,800 hands at 200 L zone, I finished with a 4.6 big blind per 100 win rate, which I think is fairly reasonable. It's uh, slightly short of five, which is what I was hoping it would end at. As we can see over my sample, I pretty much, my the gradient on my graph was very uh, steady. And then here, I think we ran pretty good in this spot and continued to upswing and honestly, at this point, I thought I was going to be hitting at around six big blinds per hundred, maybe six and a half if I pushed. But unfortunately, that dream was crushed as I went on a mini downswing here, tried to recover, went on a bigger downswing, recovered a little bit, but it just didn't seem to want to crack that 46,000 big blinds. Um, so unfortunately, we're going to end at around 4.6 for the sample, which I think is still reasonably good. All right, so here is the graph with the red line and the blue line. So basically, the blue line shows how many big blinds I won at showdown. So when the cards were shown at the end of the hand. And the red line is obviously the opposite of that. Uh, generally, if you have a positive red line, you're very good at exploiting players. Unfortunately for myself, that isn't the case. I actually just opted to go for a blue line strategy for the entire sample, which I think is reasonable given a bunch of factors. Now, I think the gradient here is probably too steep. I think there was a lot of leaks in my game that, uh, that I didn't plug until around this period. As we can see, the gradient actually flattens out a little bit. And there's not too much of a sacrifice to my blue line. So I think this is probably the um, the optimal strategy. If you can have like a slightly losing red line or even if you can get a break even and have your blue line going up quite positively, I think that is probably the most effective for the 200 nail zone pull anyway. Uh, that being said, if you're really, really good at uh, exploiting and you put in a lot of uh, statistical work, for the population, you can definitely have a very high red line and have a losing blue line, and that will also be a fine strategy as well. Okay, so let's actually take a look at how long it took me to complete these 1 million hands. So 21 months, starting in December 2017 and finishing in October 2019, we've managed to do... I think in 2018, I managed to average around 45,000 to 50,000 hands per month. But then in 2019, I did slow down my volume as I was playing other stakes. I was playing a bit on America's Card Room as well, playing a bit of live poker. So my, my volume on Ignition was diluted across other poker platforms. Uh, we only had four losing months across the sample, which I think is reasonable. And uh, we did play around 476 hands per hour. Uh, this is quite important as this improves your hourly. So I actually tried to get around 500 hands per hour, which is through my strat and how quickly I played. Whether you should play quick or not is a different uh, conversation. Um, probably not that effective to maintaining a high win rate, but I was looking at doing a lot of volume uh, every month. So that was one of my main priorities. So now we will look into the positional win rates for the sample. Okay, so let's take a look at the positional win rates from the 1 million hand sample. I think these will be fairly accurate now that I have a pretty large sample at one stake and I can use this information to improve on certain positions uh, as I move forward uh, and try and 
climb the stake. So we'll start looking at the button. Uh, we do have a 28 BB per 100 win rate, which I think is quite good. I think it's not elite. I think the top players will probably be pushing 31 BB per 100 plus. Uh, in a six-handed format. Now, obviously, when you play, you know, three, four-handed, your button win rate should be quite a lot higher than the average. But for a six-handed setting, I think this is reasonable. Uh, cutoff is also quite low here. I think a top player should be pushing around 26 to 27 BB per 100. Uh, there's not really many excuses for button and cutoff. Um, I think cutoff and button are very, not easy to learn, but they're the positions that you should be maximizing your win rate uh, as you're in position quite often and you get to three bet in position a lot. So I think cutoff here, 23 BB definitely needs some improvement. I will look into that and see what areas need improving. And then EPMP, these positions, to be completely honest, in a six max setting are pretty dead positions. I think these positions are quite dead in the sense that I don't think you make that much money from these positions. They're kind of just there. Personally, if we could play three-handed or four-handed tables, that would be much more enjoyable. Uh, but these positions are there and we do have to try and make some win rate there as well. The reason why I play so tight from these positions is because I do think that these outer, your edge of range hands are not making you that much money. Um, also because it is anonymous, you don't really get exploited for opening a tight range. No one's really going to adjust their three betting range uh, against under the gun or MP because they probably assume that everyone opens uh, a similar RFI range. Um, I also think the big blind defends way too loose against under the gun MP open. So when we do have a tight opening range from MP and EP, I think we can actually push our ranges equity quite often and we can actually maximize a lot of value. Now, I think at this current stage, my EP is around 15 BB per 100, which is actually quite low across previous sample. Uh, I think I was actually pushing 17, 18 for quite a while, which I think is quite high. Uh, MP was also slightly higher, not as much as my EP. And I think that is honestly just a function of how tight my range is. Um, there's also some other factors that I like to use a tighter range from EP and MP. Basically, you can get more hands in per hour, which I think is actually a big advantage for your hourly. Now, looking at the blinds, this is... Not really what I wanted to see. I thought my blinds win rates were slightly better. Uh, big blind at around 36 and a half. So pushing 37, I think is quite bad. I think the top players will be getting around 30 BB per 100 and less. So there's obviously quite a bit of work that needs to be done in the big blind. And I think just off the top of my head, that makes a lot of sense. There's still a lot of... Uh, nodes that I think I make some sizing errors. I think I also under defend sometimes uh, against certain sizes. So to me, it's clear that I really need to work on my big blind. Now, small blind is quite interesting. I think my small blind strategy is quite effective. I've actually done probably twice as much study for the small blind, um, particularly three bet pots and single raise pot against the big blind. So I'm actually quite surprised that this is not as low as I would have hoped. Uh, negative 18 is reasonable, but could also be improved. There was quite a large part of my sample where I was around negative 13, negative 14. So it's a bit of a shock to see it rise a little bit. But once again, um, the pool has probably improve their big blind strategy um, against a small blind. So my current strategy is probably slightly outdated. So once again, that is something I'll look into as I progress. Okay, so now I wanna show you guys some of the major changes within my strategy across the sample. I think there are about four major strategy changes across the 1 million hand sample, which I will go through. Okay, so this is my first 100,000 hands at 200 NL zone. Uh, this is also the sun run period for a lot of regs. I feel like a lot of people who first joined the site, they have a very, very good 100K hand start, which may or may not be a conspiracy, but we will leave it at that. Now, as we can see from my VPIP and PFI, I actually wasn't 
as much of a nit as I am now. I actually was opening quite, I mean, this is still relatively tight, but a lot wider than I transitioned into. And winning at 6.27 BB per 100, which is pretty good, but I think I ran pretty hot over the sample, particularly when I reviewed my earlier videos to see how I played back in the day. I definitely don't think that strategy will be winning in this current environment. So let's take a look at the sample. Um, so as we can see, my big blind uh, win rate was very poor. So during this period, I was actually defending too wide, which is actually quite a large mistake that a lot of regs make. Even to this day, I see a lot of over defense. Uh, there's ranges changed drastically depending on RFI sizes. So if you have an issue with like this, you should probably look into what you should be defending uh, against certain sizes. Now my small blind win rate was pretty good. I think that is due to the sun run and my butter win rate is quite low. This is quite, this is actually quite unusual because button win rate should be pretty high. It should be the highest winning position out of all the positions. And during a 6.27 win rate, um, for this to be low, I mean, it definitely could be sample error, uh, sample issues. But I also think it is a function of playing that position quite poorly. So I don't think my game, my single raise pot game, particularly back then, was very good. So this may make sense here. So this is basically the first 100k hands. Obviously, sun run pretty good. 6.27 BB per 100, not bad for first joining the site. So after a period of time, we actually decided to transition into a different strategy, which I will go into next. Okay, so this part of the sample is straight after the 100,000 hands. I think this is from March 2018 till about midway through August. Uh, so it was actually here... It was around this period that I started to realize that I probably need to study and I need to um, start doing some population analysis. I think I realized that I wasn't as good as I actually thought and I decided to put some work in. I mainly did population study through Poker Tracker, so using my last 200 or 250,000 hands or whatever I had, I actually went in depth and looked at some of the tendencies that occurred. And then following this period, I basically just continued on that. I started using Pio, Pio Solver a lot more and I decided to start improving my fundamentals. So let's look at the position win rates now. Not too many changes, cutoff has dropped and buttons has slightly improved. We do see an improvement in the big blind and the small blind actually not too great. That being said, once again, we can probably blame this on sample. I will say the biggest thing that changed was my VPIP and PFR. I actually, when I was doing the population study, I actually noticed how much I was paying in rake, which was probably one of the biggest factors uh, for deciding to tighten up my range. I also realized from an hourly perspective that if I tighten up my range and I don't really get punished for it in an anonymous game, I thought getting more hands per hour would be beneficial uh, when I'm looking specifically at my hourly. And so I think I probably get one of the highest hands per hour from all the regs that I've spoken to uh, at the 200 Z pool. That's obviously not going to improve me as a poker player from early position and middle position. But I think if I work on playing wider range spots like button and small blind really effectively, then that can um, that can help with my early position and middle position strategy. Now, during this period, I think I started my two plus two blog at around here and started making videos as well. So if you're interested to see how I played during that period, go check out my early videos. I actually did a re review slash reaction video to how I played back in the day. I actually quite enjoyed doing that video, so I might do another one sometime soon. Another notable thing from this sample, I mean, you probably can't really see it, but this was quite a long break even stretch here. And I decided that I needed to change some things. I also got a little bit lazy with my routine around this period, which I think affected my results. And then coming into August, I think I started to improve quite a bit. So that is the second part of the sample that I wanted to 
zoom in on. Okay, so this is the third part of the 1 million hand sample that I want to look into specifically. Uh, this is when I first started my study group and we had a very structured and rigid uh, study routine. Uh, I think across this period, we did quite a few hours. We almost did every big blind sim that we had for a single raised pot. And at this point in time, my aggression factor increased quite a bit. I started C betting more on the button. I opened more on the button. I check raise quite a bit out of the big blind. And I started to defend flop and turn barrels a bit more during this period. Um, that being said, it wasn't really reflected in my big blind win rate, which is unfortunate. Um, once again, these samples, we can't really look too much into these stats. I just want you guys to be aware. Um, so like this 37B button win rate is absurdly high. This is definitely not sustainable, although can be sustainable in probably three-handed or four-handed games. So yeah, this is, this is probably where my strategy on a whole uh, shifted quite a bit. Uh, I mixed in some elements of other guys' strategies into mine. They also used some of my previous strategies in there. So we actually learned quite a bit off each other. And I definitely think this period here, I seen the most improvement in my game. Okay, so this is the fourth part of the sample. This is actually the entire sample for 2019. At 200 nl zone, uh, 335,000 hands. Not that many hands. Uh, that being said, I did go on quite a few live poker trips within this period. I also was playing quite a bit of 500 nl, which took away a lot of my volume from 200 nl zone. So there's quite a lot of poker that was played this year, just not as much at 200 nl zone. Uh, I did ramp up the volume around this period, uh, trying to finish the 1 million hands within. Uh, before October. Unfortunately, I fell short by 10,000 hands and took a break and came back and finished and actually upswung a little bit towards the end, which was nice. Now, the reason why I want to delve into this part because there was quite a few changes within my own strategy and uh, the pool itself. So, okay, so during this period here, there wasn't too much alteration in my strategy. There was just a minor small blind single raise pot strategy change here, which actually I think worked really really well in the first two or three months and then i went to europe for three months to play live poker tournaments and some cash and i actually think i came back a much better player around here i um i actually employed a lot of the stuff that i adapted to from the live game to my online game which i think improved my red line quite a bit i started to be a lot more exploitative I also understood certain trends, certain bet sizes, uh, bluffing hotspots, which helped me uh, improve some of my uh, autopilot spots. And because live you have to, you only play like one hand every couple of minutes or so, you have a lot of time to analyze everything and think through deeply about the hand, which actually improved my game quite a bit. So this break even stretch, I think is mainly attributed to the fact that the pool has gotten a lot tougher. Uh, I noticed, particularly in June and July, July mainly, there was an influx of very good regs. Players started to check raise a lot more. They started to three bet more, four bet frequencies went up. So uh, the pool actually started to play a lot closer to theoretical. That being said, there's still quite a discrepancy between uh, pre-flop stats from the pool and what it should be, but it is definitely starting to close the gap. So now the pool is more aggressive. Um, you know, there's actually players who are capable of bluffing certain spots. So you need to call down a little bit closer to equilibrium. So um, adjusting to this period was quite tough, particularly because I was in and out of Sydney and I wasn't really doing too much population analysis. I think it was around this point when I was like, okay, I need to do something here because the regs are actually not too bad now. And uh, I did, yeah, quite a bit of population analysis uh, for this period, actually. And yeah, that's how I found out that people were actually three betting and four betting at closer to equilibrium frequencies, which was quite interesting. So not only did the pre-flop frequencies become more aggressive during this period, probably around July this year, I also noticed the big blind check raise frequency to skyrocket. Now, this was actually 
very, very similar to my 2018 strategy revelations when I found out, um, when I node locked some stuff for the population's trends. I was actually check raising a very, very high percentage as well. So fortunately for me, I actually knew how to counter this, but that has definitely increased the variance uh, within the within the sample. And as a result, we start to swing a lot more when both the preflop frequencies are a lot higher. Sorry, the three bed and four bed frequencies are a lot higher. And now that people have a capacity to raise at a higher frequency in single raised pots. So that probably explains more of the swings and dips here. And so they're the major uh, changes in the pool. I think generally from the beginning of 27, uh, 2018 till about July 2019, the pool has stayed relatively constant. I think there was, there was definitely some improvements from some parts of the population uh, throughout this period. But I think it was very, very noticeable around July this year when, yeah, a lot of the regs, it might have been new regs coming in, which probably makes more sense. Um, and actually playing a lot better than the rest of the pool. Well, that's all for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I didn't go into too much detail uh, or in-depth about some of the strategies components of the 1 million hand sample, but I tried to keep the video short. If there's anything else you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. I will try and respond to as many comments as possible. Uh, if there's any other good points that are brought up, I might do a second part video to this. But otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.